and there's there's just so much more to it uh overall i mean benny's going to also be affected by uv you want that's that's going to have a huge impact you know i can't remember if we discussed it on here or people privately you know polycarbonate that, that obviously lets daylight through but cuts uv transmission can uh can can cause that sort of softening of the benny where the the pigment's sort of retracting yeah uh, a little bit for me personally i mean i look at obviously where i'm keeping them just different different lineages in different waters there can there can be metal trace elements in water that's gonna gonna have a different pot all sorts of the whole water makeup regardless of it being hard or soft that can impact uh color pigmentation and then we get onto different bloodlines i've seen different bloodlines of of koaku react so differently in different types of water correct me if i'm wrong i know you've always struggled with uh nagami koaku a little bit in your water if i remember right um... I have two that yeah. have actually kept the Benny and kept it well. Okay. I yeah. now know the bloodlines to go down, the ones yeah. to avoid. Um, yeah. But that's me. A lot of people don't bother with bloodlines, don't see the importance of it. But it's just my curiosity because I've had so many that I've lost the Benny. Yeah. Um, so if, if we go by the guidelines of that, obviously what we're typic what's typically said is that Benny keeps better when the water's soft. Well, yeah. you know, it can be obviously fish by fish, especially if it's coming down to colour loss. We're talking about maintaining sort of Benny quality here. But I keep Nagami Koaku incredibly well in my water. Yeah. And it's 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 nothing like, you know, yours is incredibly soft. Mine's pretty just normal sort of standard mid-range uh, water. So, yeah, uh, it's a tough one. I, I, I'm not one more for looking at the water itself and the Benny. It's, it's, it's every breeder's fish will do slightly differently in different types of water but that being the full makeup of the water not just chucking it into a hard or a soft bracket mm, yeah for sure and uh yeah and again uv I, I do believe that's one of the biggest biggest things that impacts many for sure so with regards to people covering in winter yes polycarb yeah Not this this is it so thing. so so con considering the material uh i mean for me you're, you're you're as well off just using the plain so like corrugated sheet or polythene yeah. things like that that don't actually cut uv transmission yeah you know it's one of the you can obviously have too much of it as well uh we've mm. spoke about that on here where i believe that can be one of the possible factors uh linking to to ikui so much if they get real real strong exposure to too much sunlight mm uh but yeah other than that it's it's the biggest one i've, I've seen because you, you sort of see it when that benny gets really soft obviously warm warm water when they start growing it softens the pigment up you literally yeah. see them go from from summer to to winter where all of a sudden you're up in 24 they're growing the benny softens right off which is why i use color food at that time of year yeah because you've got you've got to obviously start making that color spread uh, a little bit more whereas uh yeah in winter it, it all tightens back up uh, and hardens up and that's that's the sort of process that you go through and then you see it obviously in japan between breeders it's, it's not the water between mud pond and fisher house you've got a big difference in uv transmission if mm. you're asking me you know mud ponds obviously are relatively dark you've got some uv transmission which gets darker and darker towards the bottom uh and the minute they get out of that environment at harvest time they're generally really really uh soft benny and then you get them moved to a concrete pond and very quickly that starts hardening up yeah yeah so, so for, for me for me yeah it's it's a lot more to your original question than just benny types in 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 you know hard or soft water see it with sumi as well you know yeah you know that the gen the general vibe that goes around is that is that sumi doesn't do well in in soft water so if you're looking at that theory in soft water, Shisui and Iowa Kaba by association to Shisui should keep pretty well when the water's soft. Yeah. So I've got a customer in Manchester and if he's watching this, he'll probably be uh, throwing things at the telly right now <laughs> where he cannot keep Shisui and Iowa Kaba in his water. Yeah it's, yeah, it's super, super soft. And I, I can keep them incredibly well. Yeah. So same uh, issue me, down here. There's more, there's more to it. Yeah, same issue down here. I know the breeders 
for instance, with Asagi, the only one yep. that will stay clean is Oya. Anything else, yes. you can guarantee it'll end up with shimmies on it. So yeah. it's, it's a waste of time even trying because if you've been down that route, you know yeah. it's going to happen. So it's, it's sort of like one of these age-old myths that somehow gets into circulation, in my opinion, where it's, this, it completely goes out the window. I, I can keep most uh, breeders of sargis looking good in my water. Mm. Yeah, you've got the soft water, which is supposed to keep the, the sumi at bay. And, and, and yeah, you're struggling. Yeah. I mean, for, for Showa or Shiro... Brilliant. Yeah. No issue whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. When you don't want it, you can guarantee it will come up. Yeah. So, so a lot more. To uh, it. Right. Next one. 